G'day, Glav here and welcome back. Appreciate you checking back in, so if you like these videos, please hit that subscribe button. This Glav's World video sees us do a weekend ride staying the Friday night in Tenterfield, New South Wales, and then further down into Coffs Harbour for the Saturday night staying with friends. All up about 1,100 kilometres, covering some great bits of road. Here we are heading to Warwick, going up Cunningham's Gap, which is the first time we'll cross the Great Dividing Range. Here we are just hitting Wollongarra, which is located right on the border of Queensland and New South Wales. From here, we'll be heading to Tenterfield. What's this coming up behind me at a million miles an hour? He just cut my mate off. Oh, it's a police car and he overtakes me on a solid white line. Appears the law does not apply to New South Wales coppers. Here we are riding through the town of Tenterfield on the New England Highway. We'll soon get to the historical Stanham House where we'll be staying the night shortly. Stanham House was built in 1888 by John Reed. It is the foremost architecturally and historical significant building in the district. It was designed by Italian architects in the latest and grandest style of that era. Stanham is Latin for tin, the mining of which funded the huge construction cost of this grand 19th century mansion built on the highest point in Tenterfield. It's an outstanding example of Victorian era and where we're going to stay tonight. The Guida Highway takes us back across the Great Dividing Range. We cut off the New England Highway at Dundee and will eventually end up at Grafton. 
This is a great piece of motorcycling road. Now coming into Grafton from the southern end, we're, go we're going to meet our friends that I rode to Daytona with in the USA. They now live in Coffs Harbour. We'll stop here for a coffee and then head south again, but we'll take the inland path through Nimboida, Dorigo, Belgian, and then into Coffs Harbour itself. This should have been a very picturesque ride crossing the Great Divide once again. <laughs> This is normally beautiful through here, running across the top of the Great Dividing Range, but just take a look at the bushfire devastation that ravaged large parts of New South Wales and also Queensland. So we're heading down from the top of the range again towards Dorigo. This is also normally great scenic riding coming down off the range. But WTF, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. The temps drop from 20 odd degrees to 13 degrees, so it's friggin' cold and it's drizzling with rain, and we've got pea soup fog where I cannot even see the bike in front of me. Dorigo, a small town on the Waterfall Way, is located in the northern tablelands in northern New South Wales. It's 60 kilometres west from the central coast of um, Coffs Harbour. The town's situated on the Dorigo Plateau near the New England Escarpment, which is a part of the Great Dividing Range. It's about 730 metres above sea level and has a population of about a thousand people. This is a really pretty little town and therefore time to warm up with some coffee and a late lunch. Well here we are at Lauren's house in Coffs Harbour where we will be staying the night. Typical of Lauren and Diana, only bikes and tools are permitted in their garage. Lauren tells me he's never had a car sit in his garage his whole working life and it's only for bikes. Sounds fair to me, it's Bundy time. So before we leave Coffs Harbour on Sunday morning we head down to the beach to have a bit of a look around. It's a very nice spot with a nice beach and a lovely harbour. Coffs Harbour is a seaside city on the mid-north coast of New South Wales, about 540 k's north of Sydney and about 400 k's south of Brisbane. It's one of the largest urban centres on the north coast of New South Wales with an estimate of population about 72,000 people. Nice spot. So from Coffs Harbour, we head straight up the Pacific Highway to Casino. Lauren decides it's a nice morning for a ride, so he's going to ride with us. In Casino we have an early lunch and have a meat pie and a coffee which is so very Aussie. We say goodbye to Lauren here who will head back to Coffs and Dave and I head north to Kyogle. Once we hit Kyogle and we don't stop there, we head towards Woodenbong and then halfway along that stretch of road there we throw a left onto the Lions Road which I must say is a very scenic and nice motorcycle road even though in spot she's a tad rough. We'll pass the border between New South Wales and Queensland at the top of the Lions Road. The 
Lions Road is a section of road running between the Summerland Way in New South Wales and the Mount Lindsay Highway near Rathdowney in Queensland at Running Creek. It joins two pre-existing sections of rural road, namely Grady's Creek Road in New South Wales and Running Creek Road in Queensland. It was so named as most of the funding, planning and voluntary labour for the road came from the Kyogel branch of the Lions Club. Kyogel resident Jack Hurley was one of the most prominent advocates of the road. Despite the New South Wales government rejecting the idea in 1969, it was opened the following year. It's a fantastic piece of motorcycle road, taking in the scenic stuff, but also some hard riding technical stuff as well. From the Lions Road, we'll head now through Rathdowney and then stop at Boona for a coffee, which will be the last stop before we uh, head home. Well, here we are at the usual cafe in Boona named Flavours. Lots of bikers stop here. I think I've mentioned that before. We'll have a coffee here as it's about, well, actually an iced coffee because it's about 30 degrees now, which is a big difference to the 13 degrees we encountered yesterday. From here, we'll be heading home, which is about... 80 k's back into Brisbane. Well, that's it from Glabswell today, and thanks for checking back in. Please remember, live life today. <laughs>